Hi everyone and welcome back to Ultimate Tech Hub. I'm Michael and on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to build this 9 foot custom barn door for less than $400. This includes the header board, the rail, the hangers, the stops, the handles, and of course this gorgeous wood. So let's get started. And remember, hit the subscribe button. It's really important because it keeps this channel going. So after we bought our new house, we decided that our master bathroom would need a door to separate it from the master bedroom. The height of the doorway is 9 feet, and the width of the doorway is 41 inches. So our barn door will be 108 inches by 45 inches. Our original plan was to buy a barn door, but after searching for weeks, we found that most barn doors are sized at 7 feet in height. And a custom 9 foot barn door would cost around $1,500, and that's without hardware or installation. So we just decided to build our own barn door, and this is exactly how we did it through every step of the process. And our cost was around $400. Let's get started with buying the wood and the hardware for the barn door build. We found these 10 foot 2x6 redwood planks for $16. We'll need 9 for the barn door. We had the planks cut to 9 feet at the store. Keep the 1 foot scrap pieces, we're going to need them later. Wood glue, tongue and groove set, hangers, rails, and stops, the handle, and the floor guide. The tools needed are a router, two sawhorses, a few clamps, and a hand sander. This is the tongue and groove set that will make the cuts. This set is made for one and a half inch boards. This is the router we're gonna use and we're gonna insert the groove bit first. Let's go ahead and set up the sawhorses and get everything ready. So let's get our router and make the practice cuts on our scrap wood. Here is the scrap wood after my practice cuts. The cut on the left looks off, but the cut on the right looks centered, so this is the cut we'll make for all of our boards except for one. That'll be our end piece. Let's cut one plank first and see how it looks. Okay, the groove is cut. Looks perfect. And we'll cut the rest of our grooves on the other boards except for one, which will be the end piece. But these look really good. So I cut all the grooves into one side of each plank, except for one, which is the end piece. Now it's time for the tongue cuts. First practice the cuts on the scrap wood. This is my first try and it's a little off. This is my second try and looks better. Now put the tongue and groove together and see if it fits. Success! Now cut all the planks of the tongue cut, except for one, that will be the end piece. I did have an issue with one plank. I went too fast and the end of the plank broke off, as you can see right here. So take your time with the tongue cuts, they are more difficult than the groove cuts. And I want to remind you, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it. And remember to hit subscribe as well, it keeps this channel alive, thanks. And as you can see right here, that's a perfect cut, looks great. Okay now that we're done, let's get the planks and bring them in the garage and we're going to go ahead and glue them up. First, arrange the planks the way you want them. Obviously, you want the end pieces on the end. After you arrange them, go ahead and start gluing them up. The glue I'm using is a slow setting glue. This allows me to get these boards together perfectly and clamp them before it dries. I used a rubber mallet and a scrap piece of wood to put the planks together. By using the mallet and a scrap piece of wood, this prevented damage to the planks. Simply add the glue into the groove. Make sure you have enough. Afterwards, just place it into the other plank. Use a rubber mallet and a scrap piece of wood to get it all together. Now, as you're building this barn door and you're putting it together, you want to check from corner to corner every once in a while and make sure it's the exact same measurement. If it is, then the barn door is square. Okay, this is our end piece. We're going to go ahead and put this on and tap it in, and then we're going to clamp it up. After you get all the planks together, get your clamps and go ahead and clamp it up tight. As you clamp this up tight, you're going to see glue squeezing out and just simply to take a, a rag or a uh, cloth and wipe it away. To keep the barn door from wanting to bow up, I use some weights to keep it flat. 
I also adjusted the ends of the clamps so they wouldn't be pulling it up. It'd be more flat, as you can see. So I let the barn door sit for 48 hours. And then I removed the clamps. Now it's time for sanding. And I mean a lot of sanding. With the barn door this size, it took many days to get this sanded. I started with 80 grit and went all over the board with it. Front, back, top, bottom, and sides. Next, I used 150 grit sandpaper and went over it as well. Now here's where I changed it up a little bit. On the side that faces my bedroom, I went over it really, really well. I've sanded it for a couple of days. On the side that faces the bathroom, I did not go over it as well. I kind of want that side to be more rustic. So next, get your 220 sandpaper and go over it one more time just to make sure you get everything smooth. Once you get everything smooth, bring it inside to the garage and wipe it down really well. Now you can go ahead and seal it. So we decided to go with an oil-based polyurethane. This is a quick dry polyurethane, so after about three hours, you can put on another coat. In total, we did three coats on the entire door. Now, I'm not going to show you the entire process of sealing this door. It's uh, pretty tedious and would take forever to do that, but uh, it took about two days in total to get this entire door sealed. You want to wait about 48 hours before you add the hardware to your door. Let it dry really well. And here's our hardware from Smart Standard. This particular kit comes with just the rails, the stops, and the hangers. It also comes with different kinds of bolts. So if you're going to put this barn door into studs, wood studs, or if you're going to put it into concrete. The rail is 8 feet long, and it comes in two 4-foot sections that will have to connect together. And I'll show you that in a minute. All the hardware for this barn door is very durable. It's thick, it's heavy, it's definitely industrial, so it's going to hold up well. So after we read the instructions, we decided to put up a header board that we'll attach the rail to. And the main reason why is above our door, we do not have studs that are 16 inches on center. And if you don't have that situation, you're going to need a header board too. And we decided to buy a header board with the exact same wood we used with the barn door. So it looks the same. Let's go ahead and put the rail together. We'll connect these two four foot sections together like this. Make sure all the screws are tight. And here's our header board that we purchased. We had it cut to eight feet, six inches, and we sanded it and we also sealed it as well. So before we put the header board up, we're gonna go ahead and mark the whole locations for the rail. We measured three inches from the edge and started our rail. This will keep the rail centered on the board. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill a hole in the top left of this header board. So when I get the header board up, I can go ahead and screw it into the stud. And before you put this header board up, make sure you find all the studs that are on that wall where your header board is going to be. I have five studs that I'll be screwing this header board into. I'll be securing the header board with three and a half inch wood screws and I'll do two screws per stud for a total of 10 screws. This should provide plenty of strength for the barn door. As you can see, I'm doing this by myself and I wouldn't recommend doing this, um, but I had no choice. So as you can see, I had a couple extra boards and one of these was cracked and the other one I messed up with a tongue and groove. So um, I used this to prop up the header board for myself and then now I can find the stud and go ahead and drill it and put my first screw in. This is probably the most important step. You must attach the header board to studs. Now adjust the right side of the header board and check for level.
Next, I drilled and attached the wood screw to the right side of the header board. Now I can remove the support beams. And it looks good. Looks straight. Next, attach all the screws to the studs. I position the top and bottom screws about one inch from the edge of the board. This provides strength to the entire board and allows room for the rail bolts. Here's the mark for the rail bolt. The rail bolt needs to be 1 and 11 sixteenths plus the height of the door, which is 108 inches, plus 3 eighths of an inch, which allows for the carpet. For a total of 110 and 1 16th inches, I added another 1 16th of an inch because our carpet is kind of tall. Now start drilling the rail bolt holes. Make sure the hole is a little smaller than the bolt. The bolt needs to be screwed in very tightly. So when drilling, less is definitely best. After all six holes are drilled, install the rail. I start left to right, do not tighten the bolts all the way. I use my socket wrench to screw in the bolts. Make sure the rail is level after each bolt is inserted. And remember, hit the subscribe button. It's really important because it keeps this channel going. I almost fell off the ladder when the boar fell down. It was a good catch with the foot though. <laughs> and at this point I figured out the boar was not needed. Remember to check for level. And now go back and tighten all six bolts. I did a test hang to see if it would hold. It held no problem and I weigh about 190 pounds. Let's attach the two hangers next. The center of the top bolt needs to be 2 inches from the top of the door. And you should center the hanger in the middle of the plank. When you drill this hole, it should be slightly bigger than the bolt. The bolts that come with these hangers are about a quarter inch too long. So you have two options. One is to cut the bolt or you can just add some washers. I chose the easiest option, just add a few washers to each side.
Use a wrench to tighten the bolts. But don't over tighten, you could crack the wood. Hangers are hung. Here is the two sided handle. It's an easy install. Choose the handle location and drill two holes that line up with the holes in the handle. I chose the handle height at 42 inches, which means the middle of the handle is 42 inches from the bottom of the door. Tighten the bolts with the provided Allen wrench. Let's go hang our new barn door. She looks great. Our new barn door is pretty heavy, so I need my wife and my son to help me hang it. Once the barn door was standing straight up, it was pretty easy to put on the track. High five and hugs. It looks great. The last thing to do is put the stop on and I'm gonna put some covers over these screws. I wanna thank everyone for watching and if you like the video, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love it, hit subscribe. It's free. Thanks for watching.